Hello gorgeous angel besties, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, my name is Rachel and welcome to the very first reading vlog of 2024. It feels so good to be back to filming reading vlogs after doing a lot of like end of year content. I am back doing my absolute favorite thing, which is of course reading vlogs. I am coming to you after I've already finished this vlog. I forgot to film an intro, classic me. So I am gonna keep things pretty brief, but in this video you are going to see me reading three new to me fantasy romances and you guys, I just, I really love this vlog. So I hope that you do too. So I'm gonna stop talking. Let's go to past me and start the vlog portion of this video. Hello besties, happy Tuesday and welcome to the very first reading check-in of 2024. And it's going to be a good one. I am very excited. So the very first book that I am reading for this vlog and for the new year is Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. This is a book that I've just seen so many people talking about. I've heard raving reviews and I think I know why because I'm actually 48% of the way into this book and I'm loving it. You guys, I'm so excited. I really feel good about this series. I'm really excited to see how the story develops. I love our main character. I like the writing. I like the world building. I'm super into everything that's going on. So I'm really, really happy about that. I feel like it is such a good omen that the very first book that I'm reading in 2024 is an indie fantasy romance and I'm enjoying it. Like that's kind of what I wanted to focus on in 2024 anyway. So far, so good. We're killing it. It's literally day two, but I'm gonna take this as a win. So Spark of the Everflame follows our main character and her name is DM, kind of like Carpe DM. And she is a human, she is a healer, and the human village that she lives in is essentially surrounded by a bunch of immortal kingdoms. There are nine immortal kingdoms, and the people who live here are called descendants. Descendants are basically descendants of the gods, and depending on what kingdom a descendant is from, decides their power. So there is the kingdom of Lumos, which is kind of the main immortal kingdom that we are focusing on, and of course the immortal beings from this kingdom have like light and shadow powers. I believe there's also like an animalistic kingdom, and they have like shifter powers, so so on and so forth. This continent is essentially run by these descendants, by these immortal beings of all different types of powers and the humans that are just trying to survive living near them. So humans and descendants don't get along. There's so much fighting between them. There have been wars between them. There is a strict rule of no fraternizing with the enemies, so to speak. And our main character, DM, she is just trying to get by, just trying to make enough money for her family. So how our plot kind of kicks off is our main character sees her mother talking to this very mysterious man in an alleyway, and then her mother goes missing. Her mother goes missing for several months. We have absolutely no idea where she is, where I am at in the book right now. Her mother is still missing. We have no information, but this kind of gets DM embroiled into the goings on of the nearby descendants in the Lumos Kingdom's castle. So she essentially sets out and makes it her mission to figure out what happened to her mother and take a stand against these descendants who have been oppressing the human people for so long. There's so much more that happens, but I don't wanna spoil anything because I think it's really fun to watch DM's journey of being this very nervous person, just trying to get by, but then slowly being more and more inspired to rebel and get involved in standing up against the descendants because she is seeing so many atrocities and she is finally starting to take it upon herself and get into action. So that's kind of like the general vibe of the book, right? And as I said, there's a lot that has gone on. There is actually so much like world building and talking about the lore in this land. We've met a lot of characters, but I don't wanna to say too much because I think it's fun to kind of go along with DM as she learns more things about the kingdom. We do as well. So that's been a really enjoyable experience. I really love the writing style. So as far as the romance goes, our main character DM is hanging out with her hometown slam, I'm gonna call him, and his name is Henry. I, just as somebody who has read so many fantasy romances, I don't think he is gonna be, you know, the end game. We have met another character who of course has dark hair, is very strong and built and very mysterious, but the best thing about the romance aspect of this book is DM has barely interacted with this other mystery man. So if I'm on the right track, we are at the 50% mark of the first book. They've had like one or two conversations, but they've been very brief and they do not know each other well at all. Definitely going to be a slow burn romance. We are definitely focusing on DM's development and then also kind of just like laying a base down for what this plot is going to be. So I do think that this first book is really interesting so far. I'm really liking our main character. I'm excited to see what else is going to be revealed. She also has some secrets as well that I feel like she isn't even really aware of. So there's mystery there. So all of those things right now are making me very, very happy. So that is where I'm at with Spark of the Ever flame. I do want to spend a little bit more time reading today. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen now. Once again, I don't want to spoil, but I just got to a point in the book where DM is going to take bigger steps to try to figure some things out and stand up for what she believes in. And I'm so excited to see what's going to happen because the repercussions potentially with that 
mysterious man. Like it's, it's just gonna be so good. I'm really eating this book up. I'm really, really liking it. I hope that the ending of this book ends up being absolutely crazy as most fantasy romances do. So I'm gonna keep reading and I will check in with you guys in a little bit and let you know more of how I'm liking this book. Hi besties. So I have very, very exciting reading updates. I just have to say, I am literally only on like day two with this vlog, but the vibes are good. You guys, the vibes are good with the books that I'm reading. I'm feeling so excited, revitalized, rejuvenated. I don't know, just like, when you are a fantasy romance girly and you read a fantasy romance book that just hits so right, it's truly the best feeling in the world. And that is how I feel about Spark of the Everflame, which I did finish last night, by the way. I binged like the last 40% of this book and it was so, so good. I gave it four stars. I really, really loved it. It's not perfect, but I had so much fun. I am so intrigued by the plot. I really like our characters. I'm here. I'm in it. I'm like fully entrenched into this world. I'm definitely gonna pick up the second book soon. I don't want to wait too long. Something that I tend to do, which is a habit that I want to break, is I'll read like the first book in a fantasy romance series. I'll enjoy it, and then I won't pick up the second book for like seven or eight months and then I'm like wow I don't really remember anything so I definitely want to read the second book shortly but let me just get into why I enjoyed this book so much and just my thoughts and feelings and everything so the latter half of this book ended up being like very chaotic as I said as fantasy romances tend to be there was a lot of action there was a lot of reveals but also so much more mystery was built up and I have questions I have a million questions one of my favorite things about this book though is there is a lot of conflict a lot of times with fantasy romance I do feel like there's kind of one central conflict which can make the story feel a little bit flat or a little uninteresting. There's so many problems in this world and in this book and with our main character DM. She has issues with like there's just there's so many things that are going to need to be resolved and I really like that. For the fantasy lover aspect of me like that makes me really happy that there's so many problems just because I'm really excited to see how those move the plot, how they're gonna get resolved or not get resolved or what that's going to reveal. I'm super into it and I really can't wait to see what happens in the rest of the series. For the romance, she does have two love interests. She has Henry, hometown boy, and then Luther is the nephew of the prince. And you know, we'll see where things go in book two. I will say in the first book, is there romance? Yes, but like not a lot and there isn't really any spice. There is like a couple scenes, but like it's not, you know, nothing to report to the team, I would say. So just be aware of that. But personally, I like that. Like if I could have my perfect fantasy romance series in the first book, the couple is not end game and there's no like big love proclamations and there's no big spicy scenes. You know, I would rather we have a slow burn, we have progression, we have these two characters taking some time to get to know each other, maybe going through a couple of terrible things <laughs> together. That always builds tension and romance and all of that. So I don't know what's gonna happen in book two, but I definitely feel that we have been left wanting a lot more and I personally am very happy about that. There are fantasy romances that I've read where the couple does get together in book one and I've enjoyed that, but I'm just saying like my perfect fan row is a slow burn spread out enemies to lovers, you know, story arc. So I'm really happy about that. There was humor in this book. There was pretty decent world building. I think that the world building could have been better, but also like it's the first book in the series. So maybe questions that I have right now are gonna be answered later on. I am hoping that we explore the other kingdoms more and it was fine, it was decent. I'm not expecting like high epic fantasy level world building when I read a fantasy romance, but I do definitely want to see a little bit more of that. I do hope that we get a little bit more information on that in the books to come. And while there definitely was some predictability with the plot, like, you know, things that happened at the end, I was like, yep, I knew that was gonna happen. I don't know, I still enjoyed it. It's all about how it's written. I like this author's writing style. I'm still intrigued. Knowing how things were going to end did not deter me at all from my excitement for continuing on with the series. I'm really, really invested and I'm really, really excited. And even though there was some predictability, I still had so many questions. I still have so many things haunting me. Like Luther, who is our dark haired, big brooding man, crown prince of Lumos, he said something that just, I was like, what do you mean by that, Luther? Like, what do you mean? He said something so ambiguous and like weird and kind of ominous. And then like, we never touched it again. And our main character, DM, she barely paid attention to it. And I was like, no, 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 DM, please ask him what the hell that means. So I'm gonna be stressed about that until we get answers because it doesn't 
sound good. All in all, I think that this is an excellent start to a fantasy romance series. I think that it was so fun. I cannot wait to read book two. I'm so happy that I read this book this week. This is actually my second book of the year. I thought it was going to be my first book of the year, but then my hold for the Britney Spears memoir, The Woman in Me, came in, so I listened to that, and it's pretty short, so I finished that first. But this is my first fiction novel of the year that I have finished, and it's a four-star indie fan row, so... We are thriving, really happy about that. And now I'm going to be moving on to my second book. Alrighty, so I did start my second book this morning. I'm only on like page 40, so I'm just gonna be extremely brief with this check-in, but I've started The Ever King by LJ Andrews. This is a fey fantasy romance, but I think a majority of this book is going to be set at sea because one of the type of fey in this world are called sea fey. And apparently there's like sirens and like other like water mythical monster sea creature type of things. So I definitely think that a majority of this book is going to take place on the water. But I'm really excited about this. This is a dark fantasy romance. There is quite a bit of trigger warnings in the beginning of this book, so please be aware of that. And the author did put a note about the relationship is pretty possessive, so just something to be aware of before you go into it. Definitely do some research before you start this one. I have not seen anything so far because as I said I'm very early on in the book but I'll definitely let you guys know like how things go and how I personally feel about the book as I go on with it but what is going to happen in this book is our main character I think her name is Liv either Olivia Liv I'm just gonna call her Liv right now because she's been called every variation of the name Olivia except for Olivia she's been called Livia Liv and Livy so Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Our main character's name is Liv, and she is a fae who has earth powers, and they are part of what are called the Night Folk. So she is a part of the Night Folk fae. Her parents are like the king and queen, I think, of the kingdom. And a decade ago, a war was won, and they won against the sea fae, who are like terrible, evil beings. And on the 10th anniversary of the war ending, the townspeople throw this big festival. But our main character, Liv, is feeling very ominous and very suspicious about a few things, and she has also been having reoccurring nightmares. So she kind of feels like this is a premonition. She's worried about the potential threat against the kingdoms, and she's worried about the return of the sea fae. And she does have a little bit of a connection to the sea fae because in the prologue of this book, she is a child and she has this friendship with a boy who is a sea fae, and he actually ends up getting like arrested as a boy. They kind of have this forbidden friendship, but then as she grows up, she starts to change her tune about sea fae and realizes that they're bad people and that boy that she was friends with was probably a bad person. So she's very against them and she doesn't really like to reminisce on that friendship too much but it is haunting her a little bit. From the back of the book, that guy's name is Eric, and apparently he is going to kidnap Liv because Liv's father killed his father. So he's gonna like do a little revenge moment, take her hostage, and then I'm assuming that they're gonna fall in love on a ship, which sounds just lovely. Honestly, I'm excited to see how this all goes down. But the only thing that I want to say about like how I feel about the book so far is it's really funny and the banter in this book has been like 10 out of 10 so far. There's quite a lot of characters and we spend a lot of time with Liv and her cousins and her friends and they are so funny. There's this character named Jonas and I am just like obsessed with him. He is super sarcastic, really funny. He's kind of known as the like roguish prince who has a different lover in his bed every night, but he has a really good sense of humor about it. And I don't know, I just, I really like him and there's been a lot of wit in the book thus far. So that's the vibe for now. I'm going to continue reading more of this today. And once I'm actually into the book, I can give you guys like a proper update. But yeah, things are going really well. I really, really hope that I like this. I know that the second book is coming out either in January or February. So if I love this, I will also be picking that up. So that's going to be it for me. Those are my reading updates. I will talk to you guys when I have more to say about the Ever King. Hi besties. Happy Friday. So it's the next day. It's actually the next morning. And last night I read quite a bit of the Ever King and I did a little bit this morning as well. I've been waking up at 6 a.m. to read. I talked about this in my January reset vlog, but I have been purposely waking up at 6 a.m. so I can read an hour before work. 10 out of 10 recommend. It is just the coziest, most chill, wonderful form of self-care. I'm really loving it and I'm reading so much more. Like I've only been doing this for a week now. I also did it for a week in December, but I've been doing it this week and I feel like I'm reading a lot more than I was on a weekly basis. Like a few months ago. So really happy about that. And now I need to talk to you guys about The Ever King because I'm on page 151. I think I'm like 40% of the way through this book. I am loving this book, you guys. I am so excited about it. I'm so excited about Spark of the Everflame and I'm so excited about The Ever King. It sucks when you have so much anticipation for a book and it just doesn't live up to it. I love hype. I love when people are all super excited about a book and when people just can't stop talking about it and books blow up. That gets me so excited to read a book. It's one of the things that I love about the book community when we all just get super excited about something. And I've seen so much praise for this book, but it can still be scary because 
even though I do try to temper my expectations when I go into a very hyped book, I still, you know, I still want that, right? Like I still secretly am like, God, I hope that I love this as much as everyone else does, but I try to manage my expectations. Well, my expectations have been exceeded, honestly. I am loving this book. I love the writing. I love the setting. It's super atmospheric. I really like the characters. The romance is so tension filled. I am obsessed with Eric blood singer. He is obsessed with Livia, our female main character. By the way, I did confirm her name is Livia. Oh my god, it's just so good. So I did talk a little bit about what this book is uh, about yesterday, but I, now that I'm in it more, I just kind of want to refresh on that. This is Pirates of the Caribbean. This is Pirates of the Caribbean, but give it a dark fae fantasy romance twist. Take Pirates of the Caribbean, but make Will Turner end up going bad and end up kidnapping Elizabeth Swan and like taking her essentially like if Will Turner turned into Jack Sparrow. Just like in Pirates of the Caribbean, Livia and Eric have a connection. They meet when they are children. They are on opposing sides of a war, but they're children. So they don't really understand like all the stakes and what's going on. But Eric is a prisoner of war when he is like, 10 years old or something like that and Livia goes and visits him and the two of them just kind of have this special bond. Livia's fey folk, they end up winning the whole thing and they end up banishing the sea folk to the ocean. They end up putting this like barrier called the chasm so none of the sea fey can get past this barrier and they're stuck in their own lands. So after all that goes down, Eric and Livia grow up separately, obviously, and as they get older, they start to become more aware of why the war happened and what was going on in that and they really start to resent each other and each other's people. You know, Livia had this really soft spot for Eric. He was in jail as a child, obviously, like that's crazy. But as she gets older, she realizes, oh, his people are really bad and and they killed so many of my people. So, you know, I don't really have any sympathy for him. And then Eric is just like the most morally gray anti-hero romance hero and is this very vicious, brutal king. He is the Ever King, by the way. The Sifei are called like, I think their kingdom is called Ever. I'm still kind of trying to figure all of that out, but he is the Ever King. He is the king of all of the Sifei. And by mistake, the chasm that separates the Night Folk and all of the other Earth Fae ends up like accidentally getting opened and the Sifei are able to infiltrate the night folk land. The Sifei end up sneaking onto the land. Eric comes up with the brilliant idea that he is going to kidnap Livia because Livia's father also has something that Eric wants, but her father is not there at the time. So he's like, cool, I'm going to kidnap you because I know that your dad will do anything to get you back. I'm going to take you. You're going to come on my ship. You're going to go into the Sifei kingdom and we're just going to wreak havoc essentially. Obviously, Livia is not happy about being kidnapped, especially by this guy that she hasn't seen in 10 years and she has kind of grown to learn isn't a good guy and the Sifei are known as evil. So Livia is upset as one would be. But Livia is also like, damn, Eric grew up and he's looking pretty good. And Eric is like, wow, I'm kidnapping her, but she's also really beautiful. And I also want to be really sweet to her, but like, I also have to be tough. And they do this really interesting dance of truly like hating each other and being rude to each other because this is enemies to lovers. And I think that there is some like good enemies, you know, banter going back and forth but they're so attracted to one another and like they're so obsessed with one another, but then also like they're so angry at each other. It is so good. The romance dynamic is full of tension and angst and it feels legitimate. There's real stakes here, obviously. Eric kidnapped Livia, not great to say the least. And when Eric looks at Livia, he sees the daughter of the man who killed his father. So they both have legitimate reason to dislike each other, but like there's just this connection between them and oh, it's so good. I truly like, okay, one more time. I'm just gonna talk about Eric. He is super into Livia while at the same time being hell bent on his mission, which is getting this item from her father and doing whatever means necessary to get it. Like he is very clearly like, I will kill whoever I have to kill to get this thing that I need from your dad, but also very into you. So it's this really, really fun dynamic. And I just think it makes the stakes and tension between them really high because it could very easily be one of those things where, oh, they start out as enemies, but he really likes her and then kind of all that tension is gone. They're definitely attracted to one another, but it's a begrudging attraction that built from their childhood. But now they're both adults and they both have ideals and views of the world and views of each other's people that are clashing, that are going to make it so hard for them to coexist. And he literally is like, I will do anything that I have to do to get this but also I like you. So it's just, I don't know, it's really good. It's really good back and forth. You can see them both struggling with their feelings and trying to figure out how they're going to navigate things, but they're still definitely in the very early stages. Like nothing has happened between them. Sure, they like have this attraction built up from childhood, but they're also like, wow, this person is very different compared to who they were when they were a kid. So I, I'm done. I think I'm done talking about this book. I just, oh my God, it feels really good to be enjoying the books that I'm reading starting in this new year. I have read 
three books, I think. This is my fourth book though, and I'm like almost halfway done with it. So I've read almost four books in the new year and most of them have been very good. I have had my first like two and a half star of the year, but it was a contemporary romance that just came in as a hold on my library and I read it and I was like, eh, it was okay. But as far as my main focus and my main love, which is indie fantasy romance, that has been going really well. I'm so excited about Spark of the Everflame. I'm so excited about this series. I cannot wait to pick up Rain and Ruin. I honestly don't even know what that book is about. We will find out together, but this is going well. I really, really hope the next time I check in with you guys, I am still loving it as much. I do want to talk to you before I finish this just to kind of give one last check in. And then of course I'll give you like a final review, but I really love this. I like already want to tell you guys to go pick it up, but like I have been known to love the first half of the book. The second half just kind of goes downhill. So we'll see what happens, but this is really good and really fun. And just like, I'm living, I'm living, I'm squealing, kicking my feet, feeling butterflies, feeling all the feelings. I love Eric Bloodsinger and that's how I'm gonna leave you. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Hello gorgeous besties, how are we? Happy Saturday. So it is the next day and this morning I did a little bit of reading of The Ever King. We will discuss that in a second. I filmed my December wrap up. I am going to edit that I think right after I film this and I've kind of just been hanging out. It's been a good day. It's been productive. It's already dark right now and it's like 2 p.m. So I have my ring light on so sorry if the lighting's a little bit weird. But before we talk about The Ever King I did want to just like talk through the book mail that I got. I believe I filmed myself unboxing that but I just want to talk about uh, those books because I'm just really excited about them. I picked up up the Spark of the Everflame series. It's actually called the Kindred's Curse Saga, but the first book is Spark of the Everflame. That is the book that I just read in this vlog, so here's what it looks like. And then we have the second book, Glow of the Everflame. This is the sequel. I really want to pick this up in February, so I think I'm going to do that. And then the third and most recent release is Heat of the Everflame, and she is chunky, you guys, but she's also floppy, which is great. I did look at the font in Spark of the Everflame, the first book, and it's pretty big, so I don't think that this is like like actually a giant book. I mean, it is a giant book, but I think that the font is pretty manageable, but I'm so excited to have these physically. I really like the spines particularly. Like I love the orange and the flames and stuff. I think that's really cool. So I am really happy to have these on my shelves. I really like the series. I'm super excited about it. I do think that there's gonna be four books total in this series. So I think that there's just one more book coming out in this series, probably this year, I think. I could be wrong, but if that is the case, I'm excited to see what else this author comes out with because I really, really loved the first book. I think it has a lot of promise. So I'm really excited about these. Alrighty, so as I said yesterday, I wanted to talk to you guys one more time before I finish The Ever King. I think I have like 60 pages. I am here in the physical book, but I'm reading it on my Kindle. I am like, I'm a goner for this book, honestly. I am obsessed with this book. I am still obsessed at the 80 something percent mark that I am at right now. I'm so excited about this book. I'm I'm just feeling so many emotions. I am so feral for Eric Bloodsinger, like it's not okay. I don't always love a love interest, even if I absolutely loved a fantasy romance book. Like it was really good, I like the romance, I like the characters. Not every male love interest makes the book boyfriend roster. Eric Bloodsinger is just like, he is incredible. He's a really well-written character. I feel like we got to know him very well throughout this book. I feel like he has dimension. He's not just there as a prop for the female main character. He is morally gray. We find out why he is the way he is, which is also something I really love. If someone is going to be villainous, if someone is going to do bad things, I want to know how we got there. I want to know what makes this character the way that they are, and we have definitely established that. I love him. I really do. Like, I just cannot say enough good things about him. Also, the way that he's described is just like, it's overwhelming. So he has like long dark hair and then he wears like a black scarf on his head and then he wears like one gold hoop and then like those like billowy pirate shirts that are like kind of open and you can see the scars on his chest and his back. And like, I am here for the pirate core outfit. I am here for the pirate OOTD. The one gold hoop I think is what really gets me. I'm, I'm done. I can't, I can't. So he's everything to me. And like, he's so, oh my God, he's like so evil, but then he's like not. And then I'm kind of at the part of the book now where, you know, they're like getting along more and he's really sarcastic and funny. That is one of the best things about this book. There's humor in this book, like sarcastic humor, self-deprecating humor, wit. I really like that because I don't know, that's just, that's always gonna be a win for me. I like characters that don't take themselves too seriously. I like characters that can poke fun at one another. I just like everything that is happening in this book. There was just a scene that I read where they went swimming and I 
Like, I'm sorry, this was a beautifully written scene. The descriptions of where they were, the romance, the feelings that they were having. I feel very emotional <laughs> about this book. I'm just loving it so, so much. Also, I think the way that the enemies to lovers has developed has been really, really good. It's slow burn and we get enough time of them being enemies, establishing why they're enemies, seeing them in situations where they're enemies, arguing with one another. They say hurtful things to each other for sure. Like this is a dark romance. This book is not gonna be for everyone. I'll like, you know, talk about that at the end a little bit more, but just saying that now, they try to hurt each other's feelings and it's a dark romance. And I mean, he literally kidnaps her. Hello, not a great start to a relationship, but the progression from enemies to lovers has been very well done. I think it's been very carefully crafted. I think we understand why each character is the way that they are. And now them slowly kind of like transitioning from hating each other to like slight dislike to getting along because they have to to then realizing their feelings for one another. I think it's really well done. It's some of the best enemies to lovers arc that I have ever read. I hope that this is like a 15 book series. I don't think it's going to be but I will read about Eric Bloodsinger like in any situation. I'm so down. So that's where I'm at. I'm loving this still. I have 60 pages left. I'm gonna finish this book and then I will let you guys know my final thoughts and kind of give my final review. And then we will move on to Rain and Ruin. But I think, as I said, I'm gonna go edit first. Then I will read this a little bit later today and hopefully I survive. happy Sunday. So I have very exciting updates for you all. I've done quite a lot since we last talked. I did end up finishing The Ever King, which we'll discuss in a second. I made some changes to what I'm going to read next. And as you saw by the b-roll, I baked some cookies this morning. I made peanut butter blossoms. Normally I always make those cookies like at Christmas time. They're very Christmassy cookies to me, but I didn't get around to it this holiday season and we are actually going to some friend's house tonight. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to bake these cookies, bring them over to our friend's house. And yeah, it was super fun. I haven't baked in a really long time and I really enjoyed it. I need to do it more. But let's get down to business. Number one, we need to talk about The Ever King. I finished this last night and truly I just love this book so, so much. I am so excited to have a new favorite fantasy romance. I'm really looking forward to the sequel. I also found out that the next book, the Ever Queen, which comes out this month, is the finale. This is just a duology. So I made a joke yesterday about like, I hope that there's like 15 books in the series. There is absolutely not. There are only two. But also I do love a fantasy duology. I feel like we need more fantasy duologies. So I'm excited to see what happens in the second book, how we wrap things up. And I hope it's a really great ending. So, so I'm very excited to read that. But as far as The Ever King goes, the romance was fantastic. I love the characters. Eric Bloodsinger is just, uh, I just love him so, so much. I really did love the atmosphere, the set of this book was really great. I liked the writing style. Everything was really, really fantastic, except for one thing that happened in the last 20% of this book. So this is not a five-star read. When I last checked in with you guys at the 80% mark, I was thinking I was going to give this book five stars. It had that five-star feeling. There's one thing that happened in the last 20% and it kind of threw me off and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to give this book five stars. This is a very, very strong four star, but please know four star is an excellent rating for me. Anything that I rate a four or a five star, I love. It's a favorite book. I 10 out of 10 recommend. This book is fantastic. It just has one thing that kind of threw me off towards the end. I am going to try to talk about it vaguely, but it is definitely like spoilery. So I apologize if this is a little bit confusing, but essentially in the last 20% of this book, we have a big reveal. And this has been talked about throughout the entire book. It's a significant part of the plot, but there has been some question around it. And finally, our characters are asking for the truth. They want to know what actually happened in this specific plot point that has been referenced. However, when the truth is revealed, it's like half revealed and we're not actually told what the truth is. And of course, this is a fantasy series. Maybe we will get that information in the next book. But the problem is the characters accepted this answer. They just accepted it and like moved on and seemed satisfied by that answer. And it really threw me off because this is something that I was wondering the entire book. And I was like, oh my God, finally, we're going to get the answers to this. And then the person answers and they essentially say like, well, it's not exactly how it happened. Um, so yeah, 
And then like, we just move on and everyone's just like, okay with it. And I'm like, what? Like I was sitting there like, no, this cannot be how we leave that. So I am docking a point for that. If it was like a way smaller thing, if it was like a sub plot line, I think that I wouldn't care. And I would be giving this book five stars because I literally loved 99% of this book. But that really threw me off. And I really hope that that gets addressed in the second book. It's just the way that the characters reacted after they get this like non answer. They seem very satisfied. Everything is like good and resolved. And I was like, no. I'm not, I don't accept, I do not accept this. So that is the only thing that threw me off about this book. And it sucks because it happened in literally the last 20%. Like up until that point, I was loving this book. I mean, you guys saw, I was just like, bursting with energy every single time. I was checking in because I was so happy to be reading a book that I'm loving, but it does not take away from the fact that I think The Ever King is fantastic. I think you should pick it up. This is a very strong fantasy romance. If you like the idea of Pirates of the Caribbean plus a dark fae fantasy romance, definitely I think that you should pick this up. Do check trigger warnings though. As I said, there is a list of trigger warnings at the beginning of this book and it is a dark romance. There is definitely a possessiveness to the romance and so it's not gonna be for everyone. Just do a little research before you pick this book up and see if this is for you. I personally really enjoyed this book and just all the elements of it really, really worked for me. And I'm not normally a dark romance person. I personally don't feel like this is that dark, but that's a very subjective statement. So please definitely take care of yourself and make sure that you look at the triggers and just kind of decide for yourself if you want to read it. But I cannot recommend this enough. It is so, so good. I cannot wait to read The Ever Queen. And I just like, I love this book. I die for it. There's just one tiny thing that kind of threw me off, but I still think that this was absolutely fantastic. So the next book that I was planning on reading for this vlog is Rain and Ruin. I did not know much about this book before I picked it up on Stuff Your Kindle Day. I saw a ton of people talking about this book saying, make sure you get it. It's so fantastic. And so I added it to my Kindle. I'm very easily influenced. And so I started this book last night, not really knowing anything about it. And I got a few chapters in and I realized very quickly, this is definitely a political fantasy. It feels very political right at the beginning. The writing is pretty dense. It's good. It's good writing, but it is a very political focused fantasy. And I was like, hmm, I wonder, is this like a true fantasy romance or is this like a political fantasy with a romance subplot? So I went to Goodreads and from what I saw from reviews of people, this seems to lean more towards a political fantasy. It does have a romance subplot. That is definitely a big part of this book, but it doesn't feel like a pure fantasy romance to me. I saw a lot of people saying this is a great political fantasy. I saw a lot of people saying if you're coming from like the epic fantasy genre and you want to try out fantasy romance, this is a good book to start with because the romance is not quite at the forefront. And I also saw people saying that the romance doesn't really kick off a lot until like the 60% mark. As I was reading it, I was like, this is good, but this is not what I'm in the mood for. And my vibe for 2024 is I am not forcing myself to read anything if I am not interested in it within the first few chapters. I've done that before. I forced myself to read books when I was like, I don't really know if I want to read this. Like, I don't really know if I'm feeling it. And that is a one-way ticket to a reading slump. And of course there are exceptions to that. Like if I start a book and it's really great and then it slows down, I'm not necessarily going to DNF it at that point. But if I start a book and I'm just not feeling it, if my current mood does not match that book, I'm putting it down. So I'm not even considering this a DNF. I'm just going to go back to the beginning in my Kindle and act like I never read it, wipe it all from my memory. And whenever I'm in the mood for a political fantasy with a romance, I will definitely pick that up because it does have very great reviews and I love a political fantasy when I'm in the mood for it. But at the present moment, I'm just really in the mood for like pure fantasy romance. So that is what I'm going to do, which means I needed to find a, another book to read. And I decided I'm going to pick up The Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen. I did read The Bridge Kingdom, I think like two, two and a half years ago, and I gave it three stars. I wasn't super in love with it. I thought it was fine. Admittedly, I did feel it was a little bit boring, nothing really special. And I decided to not continue on with the series, but I have heard that the series series does get better and better. I also know that the first two books follow one couple and then the next two books follow another couple. And I do like the idea of that. As the story continues on, we are getting different POVs, kind of like in A Court of Silver Flames, we switch POVs, even though the plot is still continuing from the Akatar series. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to read The Traitor Queen. I'm going to give Danielle L. Jensen another shot. I do know so many people love this series, so I want to give it another chance. And just because I didn't love the first book, who knows, maybe I can like other books in the series. So that's what I'm going to read for the last book of this vlog. And I will let you guys know what I think I have not started it yet. I'll probably start it tonight or tomorrow morning, but I will definitely give you guys an update once I have some thoughts on it. Hello friends. So it is time for another reading check-in. I did start The Traitor Queen by Danielle L. Jensen. I'm actually like 48% of the way through it. I just flew through the first half this morning. I am listening to the audiobook, which I really enjoy. It's a very well done audiobook. There's a little bit of like dramatization in the audiobook, so it's been very entertaining. And you guys, 
why am I liking this book so much more than The Bridge Kingdom? It is so much more entertaining. It is so much more fast paced. The plot is super fun. I'm liking the characters so much more. This is one of those situations where I think back to when I read The Bridge Kingdom, which was like two years ago. It was fine. I don't think that's a bad book in any way, but I was just kind of bored with it. I was a little bit underwhelmed and I knew that I wasn't going to continue on with it. I was like, I don't care. I'm not invested in the series. But now that I have decided to give the series another shot, and continue on with it. I'm just thinking I can't believe that I almost didn't read this book. Like it's so much fun. It has been so entertaining, really action-packed, and I'm just really enjoying myself and kicking myself that I took this long to pick it up. Of course, I cannot really talk about what is happening in book two because it's a sequel, but if you don't know what The Bridge Kingdom is about, it is an adult fantasy romance and it follows a princess who gets sent by her father to marry a rival king and her father wants her to marry him for like political gain and her mission is essentially to kill him once they've kind of gotten the information that they need, but of course they fall in love. So it goes on from there and as I said, the first book was like okay for me, but I was a little bit underwhelmed. I just didn't really find it super engaging, but book two, it's been so good. The dynamic between our characters, Lara and Arin, I love this dynamic. I love it so, so much. If you've read this book, you know what I mean. I'm not really gonna elaborate any further than that on that front, but I absolutely love where they are at with one another. It's really entertaining. And like I said, the plot, it has been like breakneck speed thus far. So much has happened. There is only 50% of the book left and a lot needs to go down before this book ends. There are still a ton of problems. The main kind of conflict in this book from how the Bridge Kingdom ended is still relevant. Nothing has really been done <laughs> to fix that. So I'll be curious to see if we are going to like very quickly wrap things up at the end of this book or because I do know that this story does continue just in different characters POVs is the plot going to like kind of resolve itself and then it's going to sort of be passed over to these other characters. I don't really know but a lot needs to happen if we're gonna finish kind of this main plot line in The Traitor Queen, which I don't know if that's gonna happen, but we'll see. I hope that I enjoy it. I'm just really happy that I'm liking this book quite a bit more than I did like the first one. So that is great. It just kind of reminds myself that I need to still give series a shot, even if the first book isn't like amazing, as long as it's not terrible. I want to continue on with it. So really, really happy about that. I do hope that I continue to like The Traitor Queen. If I do, then that means this entire vlog has been full of bangers and I can't believe that. I'm so excited. So I'm gonna go read a little bit more of The Trader Queen and I will talk to you guys when I have more to say. Hello team, how are we? So it is just a couple hours later. Number one, I did go and get my nails done, which I'm so excited to have my nails done again. It's been such a long time since I've had nails on, at least six months, I wanna say. So feeling like a baddie again, very exciting. And I wanted to talk to you guys one more time before I finished The Trader Queen. I'm actually almost done with it. I have 26 minutes left of the audiobook, So we're really getting down to the buyer here. But I just wanted to like say this before I finished the book. I don't know what percentage I'm at, but if I'm 26 minutes away from the end, I'm guessing I'm like past the 80% mark at least. And there are still so many things that need to be resolved. So I'm kind of getting a little bit nervy about that. I don't know. The series doesn't end with this book, right? We do continue on with the inadequate air, but we do change POVs. So maybe like the political stuff is just going to carry over into the next book. But also like some of the relationship things are not wrapped up yet. I do hope that we have a satisfying ending. I guess that's all I wanna say right now is I'm a little bit worried about how we're gonna wrap up the end of this book because things are not peachy keen to say the least at this moment in time. And I'm like, babe, the book's about to end. What is going on? So I'll be very curious to see how this ends, if I like it, how I feel about it, but I'm still really enjoying this book overall. It's definitely better than The Bridge Kingdom. I do prefer the first half of the book to the second half of the book. The first half was like so much fun, so fast paced, so many things happening. The second half, it's like slowed down a little bit, but I'm still enjoying it. It's not bad, but I definitely think that the first half of the book was like really, really strong. And you know, it's not like as exciting now, but I'm still like fully enjoying the book. That's kind of all I wanted to say. I just want to check in with you all, let you know I got my nails done and also let you guys know that I'm just a little bit worried about how this book is going to end, but I will remain optimistic until the end. So I will talk to you guys probably tomorrow once I finish this. I think I'm gonna finish this in the next like hour or so whenever I pick it up. I have a couple things I wanna do, but then I'm going to finish this and then we will talk tomorrow with my final thoughts. Hi friends. So it is the next morning and I am here to give you guys my final thoughts on The Trader Queen and then do a little wrap up on all three books that I read in this vlog. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with The Trader Queen. I am really happy that I picked this book up. I definitely think it was a step up from The Bridge Kingdom and I really, really enjoyed this book, especially the first half. I thought it was so action-packed 
action-packed and so fun. As far as the ending, things did get wrapped up very, very quickly and just very neatly. And I don't think the ending was bad or anything, but honestly, I think this book could have been like 100 more pages, which is something I never say because I feel like so many fantasy romance books are like, 700 pages long and a lot of times I have criticism for that but I think that this book actually could have been longer and I think that that would have just like developed the plot and the like transition within the romance more but I still enjoyed my time with this book and I definitely think it's a strong book and it made me really excited to continue on with this series. So the next book is The Inadequate Heir and I'm definitely gonna pick that up. So many of you have talked about The Inadequate Heir and how fantastic it is so I'm really looking forward to it. I did go look at the synopsis for that book and I'm, I'm excited. I'm really intrigued by those characters so I think it's gonna be really fun. So overall, I am going to give The Trader Queen a three and a half star rating. I thought it was solid. I thought it was really, really good. I do just wish that the ending wasn't as rushed, but I had a lot of fun reading that book and it definitely made me just even more excited for Daniela L. Jensen's newest release, which is A Fate Inked in Blood. And that comes out at the end of February, I want to say. And that's the start of a new series. I think I gained an appreciation for her writing style by reading The Trader Queen. So really, really happy that I picked this book up. All right, so let's do a little wrap up before we close out the vlog. The very first book that I read in this video is Spark of the Everflame and this was so much fun, a really promising start. I think this series has a ton of potential. I had a really great time with the dialogue, with the characters. I'm very curious about a lot of mysteries that we have here and as I said there's a lot of stakes and a lot of conflict that this book has left us with. I'm really looking forward to it. Four stars, 10 out of 10 recommend. All right and then we have The Ever King. This is my favorite book that I've read so far in 2024. I've only read five books but this is definitely at the top. I had so much fun reading this book. This was such a joy like oh my god I just it's really, really great to pick up a book that you don't really know a lot about and then just be so blown away by it. This is Pirates of the Caribbean plus a fey fantasy romance. I really don't know what more we could want. And even though I do just have a little bit of criticism about that plot point at the end of this book, I hope that it does get resolved in book two. If it does, that'll be great. If not, I guess that I'm docking a point for like, poor plotting. But overall, I think that this is such a strong fantasy romance. I would recommend this to anyone, particularly to my romance girlies. If you aren't much of a fantasy romance reader, but you want to get into it, if you primarily read romance, I think that this is a great book to start with because the fantasy elements are not complicated. There's not a ton of really deep world building. And the focus of the book is the romance and the characters. And they are the shining light. I love Eric. I love Livia. A million out of 10 recommend. This was so, so good. And then I just talked about The Traitor Queen. But as I said, that is a three and a half star for me. Really happy I picked it up. Definitely going to continue on with the series and I really do appreciate Danielle L. Jensen's writing style a lot more now. So that is going to be it for the very first reading vlog of 2024. I feel like this was such a success. I had a really great reading week. I really enjoyed everything that I was reading and I'm just super happy to be sharing it with you all. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave. Let's do like a classic emoji on this channel and that is the fairy emoji if you made it to this point and you wanted to let me know. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. I love you all so, so much and I will catch you guys in the next one.